Okay, so if you're a woodworker, your woodworking tools will come in handy for this build. Um, now what I've done is I bought this out to drilled it, not bought it, I just drilled it out to 22 millimeters. That's the biggest, longest drill that I had. Uh, cast iron really cuts like butter, no problem at all. Um, but what I've actually done is I've taken the center of this screw further down from the original by four millimeters. So, uh, I, and I, I also, I've ground out the um, the hole that was in the back here, uh, or half a hole actually, to allow this to, to you know drop down that amount as well. And this is now being held on its bearing, um, and it you know there's about a couple of millimeter play like that. Okay, so when you take the slack out of it, out, out of it here, there's, let me see, when you take the slack out of it, which fetches it up on center, 24 millimeter. And of course, you want 24 millimeter down here as well. Okay, so then you know your parallel. Um, now why I've got it clamped here, because and I've already drilled these holes out to accept the eight millimeter um, cap head screws that I'm going to use. Uh, so now I'm just going to get a, an eight millimeter drill and just transfer um, these two holes into this casting. And I'll drill a casting then, tap in size, and, um, and thread it. So really we're just after making a good mark there, a good centre mark. Oh, I better clamp that. Because you're gonna put a bit of a fair bit of pressure on the drill to you know make it bite in. So there again, your woodworking clamps come in handy. So what I'm actually saying is you don't have to have engineering, metal engineering tools. A lot of this build you can use your woodworking tools that you already have. Okay. Let's give this a try. Okay, so we got some good marks there because this is an eight millimeter drill which is a clearance hole so now I've got to take it down to a seven millimeter hole or drill rather and drill a casting through and thread it okay so if I take this out of here you'll be able to see what's going on Spacer. Put that over there, and you can see where I've taken that casting out. So I know I've got to screw that in a bit. Screw it in even more. in and out fairly easy. Put that over there. So now I can drill these at seven millimeter and I'll bring them in for a bit of a closer look. This just does protrude through uh, about a quarter of an inch, five millimeter. Uh, and what I had to do was take this down about 
um, about eighth of an inch, three millimeters, and then I took this area here further down to allow for that that quarter of an inch, five millimeters, uh, protruding on in. Uh, this again, cast iron cuts very easy. Did it with an angle grinder, small four inch angle grinder, no problem at all. Uh, as indeed I ground this here down flat um, to allow me to be able to drill that through. And this is a far better method to have the Nima 34 out on the back. It just frees the front of the machine up. Okay, so I'll drill and tap these. So we've got the waxy screw in there successfully now and uh, everything looks absolutely fine. So at this point uh, what I want to do is uh, bring the column over and I know I have to take uh, a little, just a little bit or clean the casting up uh, of the base of the column. Uh, fit it on here and mark these holes out on it, drill them out and um, thread them and uh, then check everything again to make sure nothing's gone out of line and um, I'm not really expecting it to and everything will be right. So this is the section of column here. I'm pretty sure this is fine. Probably don't need to do anything with that but I will take a bit out. Uh, I'm just taking a little bit out of here just to make sure that this fits over the bearing area and you know, it doesn't interrupt with it at all. And yeah, let's uh, see how that goes. Look, you can do this with, look, you could do it with a file, but uh, you know, I, I tend to use a, a small angle grinder, four inch angle grinder for doing this job and uh, it's all it really needs. So now comes the hard part. Because this is very heavy. Oh, like that. Don't want to block out too much of the the here, here but I'm no good to lift this up and put it on there as gently as I can. Let get my fingers trapped. One thing I don't advise and that is having a phone in your pocket. Okay. This is about 80 pounds. If we can get this on here. Oops. Here we go. Oh, look at that. That's on there. Uh, actually, what I want to do is push this on a bit further. I 
got it toppling off over on me. I'm just going to put a couple of bolts in here just to tie it down really square. Of course when I finish this entire process um, and you know I, I have the mill working I will be tramming the column back in uh, because it I don't know I don't know how good it was from the factory um, there's certainly no shims on there it was just a little bit of filler as in car body filler I know they use it on the casting I just hope they didn't use it to tram the the uh, the column up. That wouldn't have been very good. But being a optimum or precision Matthews, I doubt it. I think it had probably been uh, ground and uh, done right. Okay. So now, drill and tap these. When you're tapping a thread into cast iron, don't put anything, no lubricant, nothing at all. Do it dry. And do one full turn, and then back half a turn. Or you can actually go one and a half turns in, back half a turn, 